Welcome to the Taking It Outside podcast from Spring Hill Outfitters, the show that connects you with the outdoors, with experts on guns, archery, cooking, outdoor gear, and more. Here's your host, Trent Lassiter. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to yet another episode of Taking It Outside here at Spring Hill Outfitters. We are happy to be back in Spring Hill Studio for another episode, and we are even happier that you decided to join us today. Uh, as always, this is uh, Season 2, Episode 3, Taking It Outside. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find this one. All major podcast platforms. Uh, I will say Facebook has been one of the more popular, newer places that you can listen to podcasts now. So uh, head over to Spring Hill Outfitters on Facebook. On your phone, only on mobile devices, I think it is. And uh, go to podcast, take it outside, subscribe, rate, review. We're on YouTube. If you've only listened to us and hadn't looked at us on video yet, I'd recommend going to YouTube. You can see some facial expressions and funny things that may happen that you can't hear, but you can see. So uh, check us out, YouTube, Facebook, social media, of course, with uh, Spring Hill Outfitters, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. All that kind of good stuff. Shop with us online at springhilloutfitters.com. Brand new online store. New stuff coming every day. If you haven't been the last 24 hours, you've missed something. So uh, check it out, springhilloutfitters.com. As always, we thank Joel Gilly Productions for his magic behind the scenes. And uh, we talked about it last week. The studio has changed since last season. And it's even changed since last week. So... This is probably about all we're going to do for a while. I think we're done. We had a couple more lights, thanks to Joe Gilly Productions. I'm sure I'll probably get a bill for those, but we added some new up lights in the back since last week and uh, had a new camera. Got a new camera in the studio, so uh, we're very high tech. We're heading in the right direction. So uh, thanks to Joe, as always. Check him out, Joe Gilly Productions, for all your productions, production needs and DJ needs as well. He's an awesome DJ. So. Uh, if you listen to last week's episode, which came out last Friday, I would thank Josh and Josh. We talked about the strut masters and shooting turkeys, and and uh, had a good episode. So if you have not tuned in to that one, when you get done with this one, backtrack episode two, season two, last week. So thanks to Josh and Josh. Today, I will introduce our special guest, who you've heard before. We didn't have video when you were here last time, did we? No, we didn't. Back in the early days, last year, before we had video, Mr. Patrick was with us and talked about grilling and chilling in Kamado Joe's. Patrick is back. What's going on? Not much, man. Good to be back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for coming back to join us here. Patrick, uh, we won't go over a whole bio again, but lives in Virginia and uh, likes to sit a microphone too far away from us. I'm going to slide it up a little bit. And uh, no, Patrick's our Kamado Joe rep. He's been our rep for a while. Uh, overall, we'll say a while, but um, he's back in town this weekend. A lot of stuff going on this weekend here around that we'll talk more about in a little bit, but uh, he's back in town. Yes, sir. He always stops by when he's up and down the Interstate 95, and we're always happy to have him. He's one of those sales reps. I try to be nice to everybody. I was raised that way, but pretty much all of my reps that I like, which is 98% of them, uh, I always – offer it whenever you're around to come hang out you know so i offered that to patrick and so he came in to town the first time and he stayed at the house and we hung out and he cooked all this great food invited friends over and employees and we cooked and entertained and had a great time and left and went on about his way traveling around different accounts and then two weeks later he's like hey can i stay at your house again this week <laughs> I'm back in town, and I was like, okay, that's cool, no problem. <laughs> so now every two weeks he's at my house. He that's has right. a bedroom. Yeah. I need to put a sign over the door. But, no, Patrick, uh, <laughs> always happy to have him here. We'll catch y'all up on what we did. Let's see. Uh, we're going to talk cooking in a little bit, not so much grilling and grills. We're going to talk about recipes and cooking some uh, wild game and everything else in between. That's right. But uh, to catch y'all up a little bit, the reason we're on this episode – about recipes and cooking wild game is after we recorded last week's episode with Josh and Josh talking about turkey hunting, we went hunting the next day and I killed a turkey. Woo -woo. All right. I'm not a professional turkey hunter. It was my second time going turkey hunting and the second turkey I've killed. So I'm two for two. 
Can't get better than that. I may retire. But I said that last year. But, no, uh, very fortunate we recorded last Friday's episode earlier in the week. And uh, under the guide service of Josh Marks, who was on last week's episode, and then Mr. Douglas, went the next morning, and uh, we were set up less than 20 minutes. Bird came out right to the decoys, shot him, got some pictures, and we were back at home eating chicken minis within an hour. All right. So it was my kind of turkey hunting. That's a good way to do it. So uh, not a huge turkey hunter, but I enjoy it. Those guys enjoy it, and we all went and hung out and had a good time. So uh, killed a turkey, and the one I killed last year you see over my shoulder on the wall. And uh, so this one we breasted out, and we were going to cook the turkey. And I have a lot of confidence in my cooking. Maybe I shouldn't sometimes, but I can work a grill for a novice that I am. I'm not bad. I don't do anything crazy. But I can agree. I'm not as good as Patrick. No. One day, maybe. I've had your cooking. It's good. So I was going to cook my turkey on my Kamado Joe grill. And uh, so we breasted the bird out. And I, I had no clue how to cook a turkey. You ever cooked a turkey, a wild turkey before? I have. One. So, and we had, this is a lot of, off, we haven't really discussed this conversation yet. So you don't know what you may hear. But So uh, I was like, well, I, wanna, I know I want to grill it. So Josh... Uh, and Josh, we're like, well, you got to breast it out, soak it in water overnight in the fridge, pour the water out, put new water in it. And then uh, every day, I said, well, I want to cook it. I killed it like on Wednesday. I want to cook it on Friday or Saturday. So they said every day, change the water out. Mm-hmm. Kept it in water. And I ended up doing, uh, I think I was tied up Saturday. I think we did it Friday. No, it was Saturday. I'm sorry. We cooked it Saturday. So I got it out Saturday morning. And, uh, during this time, Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday, I won't name any names, but a lot of Spring Hill Outfitters fellow employees of mine were talking junk about how it sucked and it was not going to be good and grilled turkey is never good and it's going to be dry <laughs> and tough. And I still have my confidence. On the inside, I was a little bit worried, but I had my confidence. So I um, told them it was going to be great. Anyway, took it out that morning out of the water, I cubed it up, I sliced it, cubed it up, and put it in some Italian dressing, mm-hmm. Ziploc bags, put it back in the fridge for like two hours, three hours, went back to the house, got it out, and uh, wrapped it in bacon, little pieces of bacon, wrapped it up, and uh, wrapped it in bacon, put some uh, meat church, I think it was Holy Gospel, sprinkled a little bit of that on there, brought it to the store to cook on the Kamado Joe we have here at the store. And uh, I cooked it. I think I rotated it maybe once. Cooked it for 20 minutes, if that. 20, 25 minutes. And got it off. And so this is how much confidence I had in myself. I bought some other stuff to cook for lunch in case this wasn't good. (laughs) So I I went to Mr. Billy's, of course, over at the town market, which we get all of our food from that we don't get out of the woods or a field. We go to see Mr. Billy. Daltry at town market. But I had bought some bologna and cheese sandwiches just in case. Anyway. High confidence. Got the turkey out, brought it in, tried one myself to make sure it was edible. And uh, I have to say, the turkey was dang good. Good. All the naysayers that work here uh, even said they thought I had bought the turkey from the grocery store or it was filet or pork. It was. Just, it tasted It was really good. The, the bacon and the seasoning and the Italian dressing, it all came together really good. It was not tough. It was, uh, it was not dry. It was good. So nice. I – am one for one on cooking the turkey and it was good so i was like well let's talk about cooking stuff wild game fishes and ducks and turkeys and chickens and whatever else we cook <laughs> so that's why patrick's here and it happened to be he's in town for an event we have going on we'll talk about now yeah. which is kamado joe day maybe kamado joe weekend we'll see what happens today being friday but tomorrow uh is uh saturday and kamado joe day is going to be uh, happening here at Spring Hill Outfitters, and Patrick's going to be here. Keeping an eye on the weather forecast right now, but the plan is to be doing some demos and trying some different recipes and food and, and all that kind of good stuff. So that's why he's in town. So I'm done talking for a second, I promise. So you cooked <laughs> the turkey before. How'd you cook yours? Well, I breasted it out and just smoked the tur- smoked the breast. I Everybody says smoking it is, uh, I think the number one, I ask a lot of people, the number one, recommendation was to deep fry or fry you know cube it up and batter it and fry it everybody said it was great but uh i did hear a few people that smoked it 
Yeah, I just did a SPG on it and uh, wrapped it in bacon, and smoked it at 225 to about a 160 internal temperature. It turned out pretty good. How long ago was this? A while back, uh, recently? Probably five years ago, six years ago. It was on turkey that I killed, so it's been at least that long since I killed one. So, uh, turkey, when, if anybody tells you you can't grill a turkey, we can okay. tell them otherwise. Yeah. Smoke a turkey, fry a turkey, it's that time of the year where everybody's killing turkeys and uh, trying to cook them up. But other types of cooking, of course, we always eat what we kill, and we always love trying new stuff. And, and uh, So, Patrick, listen, what's your uh, outside of chicken and pork and beef? Like if you had to pick, like if, in your experience for doing different demos and cooking at home, if what was your go-to like wild game between fish and, and uh, duck and deer and turkey? What's your favorite thing you've ever cooked as far as wild games concerned? My go-to is salmon. Yeah, it turns out so good every time. I just do a blackened salmon fillet, skin yeah. on, skin side down, a little olive oil, some blackened seasoning, chupacabra, and oh, it's money, man. We sell chupacabra here at Spring Hill Outfitters. And on our website. That's right. Uh, my dad likes salmon. He's a big salmon yeah. fan. Salmon. 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 The so L salmon. 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 <laughs> salmon. It looks like salmon. Hey. There's a L in it. That's right. Why did he spell it different? If it wasn't supposed to be called salmon. <laughs> salmon. 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 Whatever. Anyway. Salmon. Salmon is good. Uh, quail. I mentioned quail. You cook quail at the house before. And uh, going back to this is not a commercial for town market, but they do have uh, quail. You can buy quail there now to cook. And we've done that before. Obviously, wild quail are kind of a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. But uh, Mr. Billy sells quail. Quail's good to eat. Yeah. I cooked it for your dad that one time. Yeah. Dad's a big quail fan. Uh, doves. We cooked doves. We talked about it, I think, last year around Labor Day. All those doves that we slaughtered on Labor Day weekend, we grilled those up. But are you ever cooked many doves before? I've never even eaten dove. Really? Can you believe it? I hear it's amazing. Well, you're a great guest to have on this episode. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I will say dove is uh, it's it's good, and it's edible, but it's not my favorite. I don't think. Yeah. We were at, we cooked. I don't know. I was so. I think honestly, when we cooked last September at the house, we had I had killed so many or been involved in killing so many doves. And cleaning so many doves and preparing so many doves they and then eat cooking doves. so many doves. When the doves were ready to eat, I didn't I think we, we did the same thing. We uh, marinated a dove breast and we wrapped them in bacon. We love wrapping things in bacon around Spring Hill mm-hmm. Outfitters. But uh, wrapped them in bacon, put them on a Kamado Joe, and everybody said they were great. And I did try one and it wasn't bad. But I think I was just so tired of doves. But yeah. Doves are good. Uh, let's see. We did quail, doves, uh, du- fish. You gave me some duck, uh, duck? last year. Went on that trip you with that? you. I did. I cooked it. How'd turned you cook out, it? Turned out good. I just did it on the uh, the soapstone on the KJ. Seared it on both sides, and uh, oh man, it was it was good. Can't remember what I seasoned it with though. Probably some garlic in it. I think a lot of this <laughs> stuff that we're talking about, it looks it's good. It's all how you cook it, what you season it with. Yeah. How much bacon you wrap it in? Right. <laughs> how much right. ketchup you put on it? Uh, that's what I told the guys about the turkey last week. I was like, well, you can't you – know, you wrap anything in bacon and put Italian dressing on it. It's going to be good. But, uh, so, yeah, duck is good. I think some ducks obviously are better than others. So, uh, I have some friends that have tried all kinds of stuff, and some are definitely more popular than others to try yeah. to grill. But uh, let's see, uh, deer. Mm. What's your best? What's your best way to prepare? Are you a jerky guy, or do you? How do you? Uh, what part of the deer is the best deer? The best I like part of the deer. All of it, but man, backstraps my go-to. I like to uh, I sear it up on the KJ. Uh, <clears throat> just use salt, salt, pepper, garlic, crusted with a little bit of uh, the duck fat. Oh man, that sears it up nice. I buy the duck the duck fat in a spray can though. So that's cheating. Yeah, it is. Do you do? Have you ever done jerky much before? No. Never. No. I think I said this before, but in uh, our Kansas hunting trip we had back in January, one of the guys that was there had made like a. I swear it's a two gallon bag. If I'm not mistaken, a ziplock like a two gallon ziplock bag full of of, of, uh, of deer jerky. 
and it was seasoned with something that had like a little bit of bite to it. Like, and, uh, the first morning we were in the blind and I was eating my sour patch children, of course, which was my go-to, but, uh, they pulled that bag of jerky out and passed it down. I was on the far left, which is the farthest away from the jerky, but I got it. And everybody tried it and passed it back down. And it was like 10 minutes later, we were like, pass that bag of jerky back down here, pass it back down. And anyway, two or three times I was like, Hey, is this bag like you have one bag per day or this bag for the whole trip or what? So like, this is a bag for the whole trip. That's all we got. I was like, oh, oh, we got man, face more jerky in a hurry. But anyway, it was good. Never, I've never done prepared beer jerky before. No, I've eaten a lot of it. It's, it always turns out good. Every, yeah. every batch I've had. So, what else? Have you had any experience getting anything else? Any kind of wild game? Is that pretty much it? No, I think that's about it. Trout. I, I love to trout fish, so I always cook my trout. And uh, again, I. I cheat on it i wrap it in tin full some butter garlic salt you can't really go wrong with that. put it in the the kj and oh yeah uh the local church here in town used to do a wild beast feast i think they may still do it actually but anyway a lot of churches have wild game dinners for fundraisers and i've been to several of those over the years and it's pretty cool to see how different people cook different things alligator i've had alligator before it's pretty good yeah gator bites how was somewhere not long ago where it was now, but they had gator bites for appetizer, and uh, had those. They were good. Yeah, so, I've had those before. They're they're good. Um, cooking anything, of course, and we're talking about wild game, of course, right now. But cooking anything, uh, seasoning, of course, is very important. And I know he's mentioned chupacabra a few times, which is we sell here, and they make several different types of seasonings for different applications. I think it's their uh, pork chop one, chop house or something blend. Yeah, chop house blend. That I use with a yeah. yellow label. That's my go-to for pork. I actually used it this week on uh, some tenderloins that were really good. But uh, we have our seasoning section here at Spring Hill Outfitters has grown, and we carry uh, chupacabra and meat church and killer hogs and uh, redneck barbecue lab. Oh, my gosh. If you've not had redneck barbecue lab, they're local. We love shopping local here at Spring Hill Outfitters. Their Redneck Barbecue Lab, they make uh, three or four different sauces and I think five different sauces and then a handful is of that, seasonings. Is that new? Did you just bring that in recently? It's been around for a little while now. Okay. But the red label, if you ever get a chance and you see it, and uh, the red label sauce, is you, I, you, I could drink it with a straw. Take some of it back home with me. My dad buys it by the gallon jug. He loves it. He thinks it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, and it is good. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, the Redneck Barbecue Lab, local, sell that. Just got uh, Killer Hogs, I think it is, this week, started making uh, like Cajun pickles. Hmm. So we sell pickles now. Nice. Which anybody that knows me any very well at all, any bit at all, knows I love – anyway, I, I love eating pickles. <laughs> Anyway, so I went to Mount Olive uh, College, which we talked about last week as well with Josh Kaiser, and uh, and uh, grew up loving to eat Mount Olive dill pickles and Clawson's. I have this moral dilemma in life. I don't know if you have a favorite dill pickle or not, but Clawson's is really good. It's the ones that they had like stay cold. You know, if you go to the grocery store, Those you buy crunchy them. ones. Yeah, they're like in the refrigerator part of the grocery store. And I went to Mount Olive. And uh, my heart is with Mount Olive, and I love a good Mount Olive dill pickle still. But at Clawson's, it's pretty hard to be. It's cheating on them. But Killer Hogs now, they have, I think we have four or five different ones, and they have some kick to them. They have some seasonings, and they got like one that's Cajun and hot and regular and different. Anyway, they're all dill pickles. They're really good. You sell all of them? We do. Nice. We make sure you get a jar of them to try tonight. Actually, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. So uh, seasoning is important. We have a full line here at Spring Hill Outfitters, the best place to buy seasoning, sauces, and rubs, your official cooking, grilling store, Spring Hill Outfitters. That's right. What's your favorite? You, you, you obviously kind of chupacabra is your go-to, but is that your favorite, if you would say, like if you had to cook a piece of meat, what's your favorite seasoning to use? In the chupacabra line? Or Wait, is, it, I know. is, there, uh, is that I, your go-to? Or? Mostly I do uh, some lanes, but you've got me hooked on the, uh, the meat church, so – I do that some too. I, I'm a, I'm, I mix everything. I mean, it's uh, I don't have one specific go to. We've got some episodes. I know it's hard to believe with all this fancy stuff we have. We actually were planning episodes in advance now 
unlike this one. This is kind of last minute. But we do have episodes planned out for the rest of season two and even into the fall in season three. But we're going to have some uh, – some well-known people stop by to talk to us on the podcast that have some seasoning companies that we've talked about, and they're going to come and talk about their seasonings and cooking. And nice. and uh, it's grilling time. Springtime is here, and summertime is right around the corner, which means it's time to start cooking That's right. outside. Take it outside and use your Kamado Joe grill. Uh, anything else on cooking before we talk about something else that you got in mind? Uh-huh. No, uh, Saturday I'm just going to do some uh, some fish, some chicken, uh, pork tenderloin, and hopefully some beef fillet if I can find it. Yeah, so Kamado Joe Day is tomorrow. If you're listening to this on Friday when it comes out, it's uh, Kamado Joe Kamado Joe Kamado Joe Day <laughs> is tomorrow, and he'll be here cooking up all kinds of good stuff and trying different stuff out. So uh, if you're in the area and can stop by tomorrow. We're open 10 to 4. Most of his demos will be around 11, 12 o'clock hour. I think 1 o'clock, maybe sometime right around the lunchtime hour. And uh, so he'll be here. We're also going to have sales and deals and all kinds of good stuff on all Kamado Joe products. Yeah. So Joel's going to be here to help me cook. So you already talked to Joel's going yep. to come be Talk your sous chef? Yeah. Joel Gilly Productions, the man himself, is going to be behind the grill as well. And uh, so, yeah, we – I uh, have all grills on sale, and they are quite a bit below what you normally see them. I can't say what because Patrick will get mad, <laughs> but they're at a good price. So uh, if you want to grill Big Joe 3s, we have Big Joe 3s, we have Big Joe 2s, we have Classic 3s, we have Classic 2s, and we have Joe Juniors, which I call Little Joe. Little guys. Little Joe. Joe Junior, all on sale. Lowest prices of the week. Um... We've got Kamado Joe accessories. We've got charcoal that's going to be on sale and all kinds of stuff. So uh, if you're in the area, check out Kamado Joe Day happening tomorrow. While we're on Kamado Joe, I will say, as of like this week, we have sold Kamado Joe grills on our website for a little while now. But just recently, well, before this week, it was you had to do in-store pickup only. And we had a lot of people that were putting Kamado Joe grills in their cart. And they got to the end, and it said you couldn't have it shipped, and they never bought them. So we call abandoned carts. Abandoned grills. We don't like to abandon the cart, especially a grill in the cart. So now we offer free shipping Yay. on Kamado Joe. Select Kamado Joe grills. I think the select includes Big Joe 3s and Classic 3s. We'll ship it right to your house, and we'll come grill on it for you for the right price. That's separate. But we can be talking in anything. That's Patrick, even me. too. I'll be coming to your house. To- yeah. If you live near, <laughs> near Virginia, call me and I'll give That's your address to Patrick. And he can go cook for you. That'd be, that'd be something cool. We could do a giveaway sometime. Offer if you live in like an hour radius or something, we can. Patrick, the man himself, and then me. We'll, we'll go to your house and bring all the food and all the beverages, and we'll do like a giveaway a Kamado Joe backyard. Little backyard party. Backyard party. All expenses paid. We'll even take a grill. And uh, food, and that'll be fun. Patrick's going to pay for it all. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Hopefully Patrick. Hopefully my boss didn't watch Thank you. If <laughs> Sorry. Just kidding. Uh, just give me that visa number, and we'll be good. <laughs> no. Um, so we're excited. Kamado Joe Day is this weekend. Free shipping on grills. And I'm not going to get into it. We talked last year. If you want to know more about the Kamado Joe grills, nothing really has changed, I don't think, in the line since we spoke last year. No. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel or waste y'all's time. So if you'd like to know more about the Kamado Joe grill lineup, listen to, I don't know what episode it was. It's sometime in season one, though, Kamado Joe grilling and chilling, whatever it was called. Check it out. We talked more about the models. One of the first episodes we did uh, first episodes in season one. So check it out to learn more about Kamado Joe and sauces and seasonings and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else can we talk about? We have a lot of new stuff coming in. Kamado Joe, one of them, we have a pile of grills, which we're going to showcase this weekend. But besides Kamado Joe, people are getting turkey season wines down. We have one week left in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Goes out next Saturday. Sad to see it go. It only stays in four weeks, which sucks. But that's the way it is. You yeah. got to deal with it. So, 
Uh, turkey season's going out, which means everybody's focus is on grilling and uh, going to the beach and going fishing and riding a boat and drinking a cold beverage out of your Yeti cup and keeping them cold in your Yeti cooler. And we have lots of new Yeti stuff. When I say lots, Man, I mean yellow, a lot. That yellow is – that's money. I like that yellow. I'm probably going to leave with something. We have – Bimini Pink and Offshore Blue in stock, and we have other colors as well that will be released on May the 5th. Today is before May the 5th, but uh, I saw it in the come back. by and check out that's, that's brand that. new Yeti colors that we have in stock. Uh, uh, he, he's, you know, anyway, uh, we have new stuff you hadn't seen before. It was in the back. Come by and check it out. Ready for you to buy. And actually, we have some old school stuff. We have not even put this on social. I may, I may put it on. Let's we'll see. I may post it Friday today. Yeah. So but we have some old colors. We uh, came across some vintage old school colors, including, uh, I think, Pacific Blue and Chartreuse and Coral and some coolers and some drinkware. They were very popular last summer, maybe two summers ago. I don't know. Maybe it was, anyway, uh, Coral and then the Blue and then the Chartreuse. We have some cups and bottles that are on the shelf now. Excuse me. So come by and check them out. Lots of new coolers and cups. And Columbia and Costa sunglasses and uh, grills and all kinds of good stuff. Guns and ammo. This uh, hunting season is – well, that should be here before you know it. It's a ways away, I know, but it's not that far until the fall. And we have a lot of new guns and a lot of new ammo coming in. Things are starting to look up finally on that front. It's been kind of tough to get stuff, but it's getting better. So uh, come on, check guns and ammo out. Uh, actually got a really cool event we're working on for the fall. I was kind of mentioning that to y'all now. The fall outdoor classic here at the store is our kickoff to hunt season, always the last weekend in August. And we are working on something pretty cool this year to expand that event to something huge, big. It's going to be big, biggest one ever. Uh, talk more about that in the next few weeks. Hopefully we'll have some information coming out the next uh, couple of weeks. But uh, I would go ahead and mark your calendars for the last weekend in August. And when I say that, I mean weekend, which means multiple days, Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And uh, we're going to grill some stuff then. We're going to have some Kamado Joes on display then too, and we're going to grill and maybe having a little – Grilling contest, cooking contest going on that same weekend, and may have a grill off going that weekend. If you think you can grill, come and see how good you really are. Lots of fun stuff. Sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, I like sports. The Hurricanes are in the playoffs. They start next week, I think Monday. So they won a division two years in a row. Hurricanes are uh, back in the playoffs, so excited for playoffs to start. We do, yeah. Uh, myself and Miss Ashley, who's not joined us yet for an episode this year. She'll probably be here the next week or two. Of course, we're big Braves fans. The Braves are not doing the best in the world, but Ronald Acuna is back. So maybe that's going to help us turn it around a little bit. We're close. We're trying to get to 500. We're real close to 500. We just got to get over that hump. The Mets are looking really good in the National League East. So uh, we're, we're, we're chasing them. We got time. It's early. We got plenty of time. Um, also, after you leave Kamado Joe Day, I forgot the most important part. <laughs> Besides Patrick being here, the second most important part <laughs> is Beach Fest is tomorrow. Right across the road at the farm at 95, the ninth annual Beach, Beach, Beach Fest. Beach Fest, presented by Yeti. Our friends at Yeti have been on board since the year we started and sponsored this event, and we're very grateful. It's pretty cool. Ninth year of doing Beach Fest and the ninth year of having Yeti on board. They're going to be there selling all kinds of new stuff that you may not have seen before or heard about. Uh, they're going to have some all kinds of coolers and cups there and some stuff to give away at Beach Fest. So uh, three great bands, if you're into beach music, Band of Oz, Jim Quick and Coastline, and the Embers featuring Craig Willard. Tickets can be purchased. Tonight through midnight at thefarmnc.com for only $25. After tonight at midnight, it goes up to $40. Oh, wow. So save that money and buy your tickets. And if you want to talk about how it's going to maybe rain tomorrow, we don't care to hear that negativity. Rain or shine, we'll be beach festing it up on the farm. All the rain should be gone if it rains at all. It's a chance of rain. It's not a 100% chance of rain. There's a chance of rain, right. which means it may rain 
where it may not rain. Either way, we're going to be at Beach Fest, and you should be there too. So come join us. TheFarmNC.com. That's all I've got. Anything else you want to talk about on your heart and on your mind that you want to share to the taking it outside listeners while we're here sitting here? No, I just uh, want to invite out. everybody out Saturday and uh, come out and help me uh, turn some food, teach you a thing or two, or teach me a thing or two. You may teach him something. Tomato Joe like Day. It. Lots of grills, lots of sales, lots of deals. Free shipping on wine, springhilloutfitters.com. Of course, most of everything we sell in the store is on our website now, minus a few things. But uh, check it out, springhilloutfitters.com. Thanks again to Joe, Joe Gilly Productions, and uh, stay tuned. We don't do an episode every week, but most weeks we do. And when we do, they'll be out on Fridays. So make sure you subscribe, rate, review, show some love, talk about how much you love taking it outside and how awesome it is. To all your friends and family, if it's true or not, we don't care. Tell them anyway how great it is. And we certainly appreciate the love. Uh, come by and see us. Exit 101, Interstate 95, right here between Smithfield and Wilson, North Carolina, between Miami and Maine. We're the number one destination on the interstate, right ahead south of the border. Pedro's number two. We don't have fireworks, but we have guns, ammo, and freedom. Pedro's got fireworks. That's all he's got, so he's number two. We're number one. He's got a big sombrero, too, so he's getting close to number one. We're working on the sombrero. We're not there yet. We're still number one. Guns, ammo, and freedom. Check us out, springhilloutfitters.com, all social media. Thanks to Patrick for being here. Appreciate it a lot. Come back and see him. Uh, Check him out tomorrow at Kamado Joe Day, as always. Uh, Thanks to all y'all. We appreciate the love. You don't know how much we appreciate it. And uh, come by and check out our guns, ammo, and freedom. And most of all, don't forget to take it outside.